Fall is my absolute favorite time of year for fashion and clothing. You know, the heavy emphasis on layering, the focus on chunkier textures and unique fabrics, you know, the earth tones. It might just be because I'm a Pacific Northwest stereotype, but I'm here for it. For the past couple of years, I've been really trying to build up my wardrobe with more of a timeless style in mind. Still trying to be style conscious and fashion forward, but without following, you know, a lot of the fast fashion trends. So I've been trying to build up this more slow fashion, kind of always in style still functional high quality wardrobe so without any further ado let's get into the first category here t-shirts I've got a few different options here I am excited to talk about and focus on with the colder weather um, in general but especially with the colder weather I absolutely love a good heavyweight t-shirt I've been on the hunt for the past couple of years and I've tried a few different brands these are honestly some of my favorite in that heavyweight tee category first up we have the Flint and Tinder you know all American heavyweight tee this is by far the heaviest weight t-shirt I have ever owned and it feels so good. It's an eight and a half ounce cotton, 100% cotton and made in the United States, which is always great to see. They have a handful of different colors in the lineup. I went with the army green and the washed black. They're pocket tees as well, which is definitely a huge plus for me. I've really taken a liking to my pocket tees. They're also garment dyed instead of piece dyed. Essentially that means, you know, they sew and build this out and then dye the entire shirt. Usually makes for a little Little bit more of a unique color in the dyeing and it can kind of wear in different ways in a little bit more of a unique way than piece dyed where the fabric is dyed before the garments are sewn and put together. I'm having a really tough time trying to demonstrate just how heavy and bulky these t-shirts are over the camera. You really have to feel it to see it. Uh, the fabric is really nice and soft and comfortable though. It's just not a super stretchy t-shirt. It kind of has that burlier type of feel, which is a plus for me. It's still really comfortable though, and that heavier weight fabric I think has a more flattering drape if you don't have a perfect you know, six pack type of body. The main body is 100% cotton, but you have 3% spandex in the collar. It's a really nice ribbed collar, kind of meant to keep its shape over time. All of the sewing and construction looks excellent. Been really happy with it, and I think it's going to be a really good long lasting t-shirt one other option i finally got to try this is the dhen 1920 heavy duty tee they're based here in portland oregon with me which is always great to see those local companies i've actually been debating if i should reach out to them like i did with grove made to see about maybe doing some sort of like studio or factory tour i had so much fun filming that footage I'd love to do more of that if any of you would be interested in seeing it this definitely falls into more of a standard heavyweight tee spectrum for me kind of similar to the filson process Spectre. It's 5.6 ounce cotton. Uh, the build and construction on here though is just top quality. Love the look and the cut and fit of this is great. I have the Loden color here. It's this really nice deep green, almost brown type of color. Not too many special features or anything super unique here other than just the quality build of everything. You know, they use blind stitching for the hem and the sleeves. You do have this little interest point on the back of the neck here where they sew on the tag. I think it's just a nice little touch of branding for them, but really happy with the quality here. If you want something a little less heavy, if you're someone that's just obsessed with the heavier, the better. The American heavyweight tees are awesome, but I'm also really happy with just the overall build quality and polish of this DHEN 1920 tee as well. Moving into jackets, I've got two options I've been completely obsessed with, both from Flint and Tinder and both waxed canvas. Uh, first up, we have the wax canvas trucker jacket. The wax trucker is made in the United States, but the materials are also made in the United States as well. The outside fabric here is a seven ounce Martexan sailcloth. It's sourced from Fairfield, New Jersey, and then the jacket itself is cut and sewn in Los Angeles. You don't often see USA sourced materials on a lot of made in America products, so it's a really nice touch to see that. The big difference with this jacket compared to something like the Filson Shortline Tin Cloth Cruiser is you have a little bit less thick of a material, which I think is a lot better for day-to-day -day use. You know, if you're out using this jacket exclusively for work, you know, construction or logging or something like that, you know, maybe you want to go with the Filson jacket, but if you're wearing it day to day, you know, in the city like me, it's definitely more of a fashion piece for me. I think this thinner fabric just lends itself to be a little bit more useful in day to day wear for most of us. The other factor in a similar note is the cut. This is a lot more of a kind of modern, not necessarily a slim cut, but just a more modern cut. That tin cloth cruiser is a lot bigger 
and boxier. I tend to wear a small in Filson gear. The sleeves end up being way too short for me because I have super long arms, but you just have this wide boxy type of fit. This is just gonna be a little bit more flattering fit for most of us. Uh, on the interior, you have this really nice soft flannel lining. It's a polyester lining. From what I can tell, the lining isn't actually made in America, which is unfortunate, but the bulk of the jacket, you know, the canvas itself is. So I'd love to see if they can make the polyester lining in America too. That'd be a cool update maybe for a future year. That being said, it's really nice and soft. It's not overly warm. You have one sort of interior pocket here that actually has, you know, the sourcing of the materials and where it's made and everything, which is a cool little touch. Really great to wear with just a t-shirt underneath, but one of my favorite things to do is layer this with a hoodie underneath. I think it's just such a classic look and style. Been really loving this for the last year of ownership. I'm looking forward to see how this ages and wears over time. Because of that was why I was really excited to check this one out to wear as an alternative in a little bit cooler weather. This is the Flint and Tender Quilted Waxed Shirt Jacket. Kind of a similar styling with the waxed canvas but a completely different look and a little bit more warmth with the quilted lining. This one's not made in America but it is a British Millerain waxed canvas. Uh, tech wax really good quality well-renowned mill as well you know I'd say side by side it's kind of tough to tell the differences other than the obvious you know different jacket styles instead of a flannel lining for this one you have this Japanese polyester lining and then it is a recycled Primaloft insulation I picked this one up in the dark forest color just as a contrast to the trucker jacket if anyone caught my winter camping video a few weeks ago I wore this out camping it held up really well you know the wax canvas is going to be weather and water resistant Resistant, which is nice. You can always re-wax it in the future. Just definitely that sort of classic heritage type of styling that I'm here for. Pocket situation on this is nice. You have two big chest pockets here. You have one unzipped interior pocket for a wallet or something. And then you have this really nice side pocket that's zipped as well. Uh, my one minor complaint with this jacket is the pocket situation for the side pockets. Uh, because it's a shirt jacket, the side pockets kind of line up with the side seam of the jacket which definitely gives it that more sleek shirt type of look, but in reality, it kind of leaves your hands a little bit too far back. Uh, it's not quite as comfortable as kind of a normal pocket placement for a normal jacket. I understand why they did it, but definitely something I wanted to mention here. You know, if I'm getting nitpicky. Otherwise though, uh, both of these have been so nice. I get compliments on them all the time. Uh, they look great, they're super functional, they're gonna last forever, they're gonna patina and just look better with age and time and I can't wait to see it. Really quick though, I wanna take a minute to introduce you to the sponsor of this week's video, Fume. It can be really difficult to break free of bad habits. It often feels drastic and leaves you feeling uncomfortable. Fume is an innovative, award-winning device that aims to help solve just that. There aren't any electronics or vapor, just flavored air, and instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all natural flavors. What really stood out to me was the build quality and the design. You know, it feels really nice and weighty in the hand. You know, the barrel here is made of wood and the mouthpiece is completely made of metal. There's also an adjustable airflow dial that's made with moving parts and magnets. It's designed to be movable and kind of fidgety to help keep your hands occupied. I'm partial to the crisp mint, but they have a ton of different flavor options available. You just slide open the barrel and pop in one of the flavor cores, you know, super easy and satisfying. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and have had thousands of success stories. If you're looking to leave any bad habits behind, you can head over to tryfume.com slash joshfen, or you can scan the QR code and use code joshfen. They're having a great sale right now with 20% off site-wide that runs from now until December 1st. After that, you can still use my code to get 10% off your order. You can also upgrade your journey pack to the newly released salon which has a really great looking walnut barrel and an onyx black coated mouthpiece. Huge thanks again to Fume for sponsoring this week's video. Head over to tryfum.com and use code JoshFen to get a discount on your order today. Next on the list, we've got shirts. This is where the fall layers really start to shine. Uh, first up on the list, we have the Relwin Corduroy Work Shirt. I've got a couple of other Relwin Work Shirts. They're all excellent. I saw this corduroy one and just had to jump on it. The build out here is 97% cotton and 3% spandex so you just get a little bit of stretch to add to that comfort and utility. Uh, definitely feels stretchier than 3% to be honest but definitely doesn't look it. It's a 380 GSM weight fabric.
fabric. Uh, I think that falls into a really good sweet spot. It's definitely heavy for a shirt, but light enough not to have to be a dedicated, you know, shirt jacket. Build quality on all the Relwin pieces I have is excellent. You get this really nice soft cotton yoke that helps kind of reinforce back there. You have these reinforcement pieces behind all the pockets here. It uses a felled seam construction, which just adds a lot to durability. According to their website, some of the major stress points have four ply, which is just completely crazy for a shirt. Simple and classic, Rowan continues to impress. Uh, moving on from here though, I do have a new shirt. Uh, this is from a brand called Iron and Resin. I had yet to try anything from them and so far so good with this. This is the Klamath shirt. I saw this design and print and just kind of fell in love with it. I've been taking a liking to the sort of Southwest style and aesthetic a little bit lately. I don't know if I'm the only one. I think it's a really cool look though. Uh, this one's 100% cotton, so you're not gonna get quite the same stretch as some of the others, but just kind of adds to that burliness in the feel. I couldn't find the exact weight on the fabric it just says it's a heavy weight but it's a brushed cotton so it's going to have a little bit of a softer feel and i was looking a little bit into the construction apparently they use something called a jacquard loom to get these more intricate patterns and it's actually hand cut to make sure that all of the patterns line up properly on the design uh, you can kind of see on the back side here you know the inverse of these patterns to see the attention to detail in this design is really impressive you have all metal buttons i think it looks great the style and design is super cool and definitely a really unique piece for me uh, last but not least uh, my other favorite next to rel win in the shirting category is taylor stitch this is one of their big staples the jack shirt but this is the dark forest houndstooth color uh, it seems like a lot of their shirts they have you know a little bit different style styles and construction depending on the fabrics that they're using. This is definitely a little bit lighter weight and in the more standard shirt category it is a five ounce flannel so definitely just kind of feels more like a standard classic button up in terms of the weight so you could definitely wear this outside of the fall and winter. Just a really nice light layering piece if you're looking to add some style without overheating. Love this texture fabric with the houndstooth and uh, that wraps it up for the shirts here. Let's get into the next category. The cool Cool textures and layering continue. Next up, we've got kind of sweaters, sweatshirts, overshirts, things like that. First up here is the Wellen Headlands Poncho Sweater. I've never had so much interest in a piece of clothing until I wore this a few weeks ago, right when I got it. I generally get asked pretty often about my clothes. That's why I like making these videos, but man, I probably got like 15 comments about this sweater. So cool to see and definitely such a unique and cool piece. It's a Henley hoodie with this really unique sort of chunky waffle knit texture. It's 45% recycled cotton, 30% acrylic, and 25% polyester. Wearing this thing feels like you're wearing a really nice, cozy, weighted blanket. Um, it is so comfortable and nice to wear. I think it looks awesome. Definitely a little bit more of a hippie vibe. Not too much super crazy going on with the construction outside of this amazing weave. Uh, you have a kangaroo pocket here, which is nice. You have a really nice ribbed hem on the sleeves and on the bottom of the sweater. The buttons look really great in my opinion. The fit is really loose and comfortable. This is probably the new coziest thing I own for sure. Uh, next up from there though, I have a Flint and Tinder. This is the felted wool overshirt. I wasn't entirely sure about this until I got it and tried it on. It's a polyester wool blend. It's much lighter weight than it looks and a lot lighter weight than I expected it, you know, because it has this really thick sort of chunky feel, but it's pretty lightweight and it's super stretchy and comfortable. The fabric itself is pretty interesting, though. I went on a bit of a learning deep dive here for felted wool versus wool felt. Uh, felted wool is wool that's woven into a fabric and then goes through the felting process compared to wool felt that kind of becomes a fabric from that felting process. Kind of similar, but not exactly. Some of the stuff is a little bit over my head, but it has been so fascinating to learn as I've been making these videos the past year. I'm not sure if it's interesting to anyone else, but it's definitely interesting to me. So I figured I would bring it up. One last noteworthy thing with this piece, it uses melamine melamine buttons. It's a plastic polymer resin that was developed for the U.S. Navy in the 1940s. It's fireproof, it's shatterproof. Uh, they look pretty standard on here to be honest, but it was just kind of a nice little touch to see that and learn about melamine buttons. 
Um, but yeah, overall, just a really nice, cozy thing. It is super warm. I wore this in the video a few weeks ago, and I was sweating by the end of that video. Uh, so I'd definitely be careful when you put this on. This is probably going to operate as its own dedicated jacket, unless you're you know deep into the winter. Last up here is definitely lighter weight than those two. It's the Relwin Thermal Crew Neck, 300 GSM fabric. It honestly feels a little bit lighter than that even. Uh, but I really like this texture here. Apparently they use different thicknesses in the yarns to achieve this really unique type of texture. I think it looks great. This is just kind of a classic. You can use this as a bottom layer, but you can also just wear this on its own. Definitely a slimmer cut because it's a thermal. So size up if you want to wear it a little bit looser. I got the medium in this and it's pretty snug on me, but not too snug. Definitely a bit of a rougher type of style focus with how the sleeves are attached here. And then you kind of have this intentionally sort of loose looking hem. It's actually reinforced, so it's not some live edge that's going to wear out over time. It's just there for the looks and aesthetics. Always nice to have these sort of lighter weight, simple stylings. I wanted to mostly focus around these fall and winter type of layers, but still wanted to cover quickly, you know, bottoms and shoes really quick here. Uh, moving into some corduroy pants here. These are the 365 Flint and Tinder corduroys. Just like the work shirt, moving into some corduroy pants. I haven't had corduroys since I was probably like 11 years old. So just a nice little, you know, nostalgia factor for me with these. I got the straight fit just because I thought, you know, that sort of straighter cuff would lend itself to this type of style, kind of an older school type of look. Really enjoying these. The fit is very similar to the 365 pants. I've talked about those before. The corduroy fabric is 98% cotton and 2% spandex. You have a ton of stretch here. Uh, it's an eight ounce blended fabric. I got the earth color, a few different options here, but this is kind of something that'll go. You know, it's not light enough to be kind of a boring light type of khaki color. Very versatile, classic styling. Uh, can't go wrong. Been wearing in these pretty non-stop since I've got them. But my other favorite, you know, colder weather pant is the Proof Rover pant. I've had the black and olive color for over a year now. Uh, they have quickly become a favorite year round, honestly, but definitely when the weather gets colder just because they're a bit burlier. Uh, I got a pair in gray as well now too. So I kind of have my whole color palette spectrum covered with these three options. The Rover pants though were such a great all around type of option, at least in my style. They look great in a denim context, but you can also dress them up a little bit. Uh, they're really burly with this canvas type of fabric, so you can you know, go outdoors with them and be comfortable and fine. They're gonna hold up to you know more wear and tear as a workwear piece. Uh, they're also a little bit more technical in the fabric, so you can use them for traveling too. Just a really incredible all around type of pant. Moving in some footwear, my sneakers usually end up going away for the winter just so I don't ruin them in the wet streets of Portland or you know out in the mud and stuff like that. So I have a few options that I typically cycle through, uh, mainly with boots. I have my Danner Logger 917 boots. Uh, I talked about those last year. They're still holding up great. I still wear them all the time. They're just unfortunately discontinued with the model that I have. So I didn't think it'd be too productive to talk about it here. I couldn't get into any sort of colder weather video without talking about my extra tough deck boots though. These have been such a great go-to for me as just a quick slip on type of shoe to run over to the grocery store. These are my go-to shoes for any sort of camping in summer or winter but especially in the winter. They're 100% waterproof. They kind of wear like sneakers, but they perform like a proper waterproof boot. Uh, these are the deck boots. They're actually designed more for commercial fishing. They're put through the test by people that are a lot more qualified than me. Uh, they have this anti-slip outsole. I don't know what they do to it, but it works incredibly well. I was a bit concerned when I first saw them because it's this really flat, kind of unassuming looking outsole, but super great if you're on sort of wet areas, uh, perfect for the rainy Portland weather here. And I do have one new pair here. I did just get these, so I don't have a lot of long-term thoughts quite yet, but these are the Norda 001 Trail Runners. Uh, they're actually trail runners with a Biodyneema upper. When I first heard about these, I was really interested. You know, Dyneema is a huge, important fabric in backpacking, so I hear about it all the time in that context, but I've never heard about it with shoes. And I'd never heard of Biodyneema either. You get the same fabric performance, but just a little bit better 
for the environment, so kind of a win-win there. But Dyneema is super strong and ultra lightweight. That's why it's used so frequently in ultralight backpacking. My initial impressions on these though, they've been very comfortable. They have a bit of a dorky, outdoorsy sort of vibe that I'm okay with as I age and I live in the Pacific Northwest where everyone looks like an outdoorsy nerd. Uh, so a bit of an outdoorsy kind of dorky vibe, but they're super comfortable. I really like that the toe box is kind of a more natural shape. You have room for your toes display if you're trail running or if you're hiking. Uh, it uses a Vibram Mega Grip outsole, super grippy, super nice. Um, all around, just initial impressions on these are great. I'm gonna be using them, you know, over the next while for all of my hiking. I don't really do trail running, but figured these would be good for the you know, streets in the wet winters, and they would also be really good for my day hiking. But that is it for footwear for now. I'd love to hear if you have any like good fall and winter footwear recommendations. Like I said, I don't want to ruin any of my sneakers, so I'm always kind of going around and trying some different stuff. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I know it's a little bit late in the year for fall. All of this stuff works well in the winter, though, too, obviously. Um, I've never gotten such a weird mixed response on this series because I get a lot of people interested in what I'm wearing, but then I put the videos out and they don't usually get a ton of traffic. And then the last one, I got a bunch of weird comments, people not being into the style. Uh, but let me know what you think of this. If you want me to keep doing it, I probably will just because I enjoy it. Um, obsessing and getting into these fabrics is so much fun. You know, a lot of this I think stems, you know, I used to be a lot heavier than I am now. Um, I lost, you know, over a hundred pounds about a decade ago, almost now. Uh, so many cool clothes I couldn't wear. Getting to be able to dive into all of this stuff that was just completely inaccessible to me in the past has been a ton of fun. And I love the story around the different fabrics and textures and manufacturing and you know, especially the made in America type of products. Uh, it's all just been really interesting and fun. Uh, huge thanks to Huckberry as well. They provided you know, a lot of clothing samples and things for me to review and test out here. They're a big reason why this is uh, all possible. Not a sponsor this week, but a huge supporter of the channel. So thanks to them as well. I really hope you all enjoyed this one. I will talk to you in the next one.